Peace be with you. I am Bruce Wozniak. This is Catholic Sports Radio, located at the intersection of your faith life and sports life, and on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and lots and lots of other podcast platforms. Thanks so much for listening, and do be sure that you have hit the subscribe button so that you get every episode automatically every week. There is no cost to subscribe. It's simply an option that you select one time for convenience. We even have a subscribe page on the website that tells you not only where, but how you can subscribe. Again, though, there is no cost to do that. The show website is catholicsportsradio.net. You can listen there, but there are also links there to hear the show on all kinds of podcast listening apps. And there are links on the website to Catholic Sports Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please be sure to like, follow, etc. on those platforms. You can always send comments through the website, plus you can post thoughts, suggestions, and engage with other listeners, and even post prayer requests in the show's Facebook group, which is called CSR Listeners. There's a button for that, too, on catholicsportsradio.net. Also, please help me spread the word about the show. I would appreciate it if you would tell others about Catholic Sports Radio as I continue trying to draw in more listeners in the hopes that this ministry will bring them closer to Christ. And by the way, if this is your first time listening, thank you. And do go back and listen to previous episodes of Catholic Sports Radio. There have been a lot of great guests, a lot of really good testimony. In terms of my ministry moment for this episode, it's quite noticeable when an athlete goes down with an injury that stops a game. And I'm talking about where not only does one or more members of the athletic training staff have to come out and attend to them, but a lot of times you'll see the other athletes on both teams take a knee. Even the cheerleaders will too. Some, you can tell, even go into prayer. But athletes are getting hurt all over, and it's not just always real obvious. Don't even get me started on some fans out there that have cheered for a member of the opposition getting hurt or making statements that they wish the star player on the opposition would get hurt. We ourselves hurt when we walk around with sin on us. That's like looking at a limb being in a cast or having our arm in a sling or even just heavily bandaged. Our Catholic faith, our God, offers us the wonderful opportunity to heal those wounds, to seek forgiveness and gain absolution. In Matthew chapter 6, it says, If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. Friends, forgive and be forgiven. Let's be ready to go into the lineup injury-free, healed, and ready to tell others the good news. Moving on now with episode 50, my guest was a competitive figure skater from the time she was 8 years old through college, and she began dancing in a variety of styles when she was 5, and she still dances regularly and is still occasionally involved in different projects and performances, currently being involved in a dance video project. She is the founder slash director of the St. Sebastian Center for Performance Excellence, She is a licensed therapist with advanced training in sports and performance psychology and has developed programming for the likes of Robert Morris University Basketball, the Penn's Elite Hockey Team, and Franciscan University Athletics, among others. Through Trinity Sports Medicine, she is also the referral source for athletes seeking mental health services. Welcome to Catholic Sports Radio, Rachel Popchek. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, absolutely. To give the listeners some background on your Catholic faith and the foundation that you've built your professional career from, I want to start off by reading a statement that you wrote to me. It said, quote, I am a cradle Catholic raised in an active Catholic family. Our faith has always been an integral part of our individual and family identity, which I feel made a difference in my experience as an athlete from the experience I witnessed in my friends that I danced or skated with, end quote. I want to focus on the latter part of that, Rachel. You feel that made a difference in your experience as an athlete from the experience you witnessed in your friends that you danced or skated with. How so? I do. Um, so growing up, as, I, as, as you read, kind of faith has always been a very integral part of who I am. Um, and because my identity was on a broader scope um, than simply the last scores that I had um, or the feedback that I got from my most recent performance. Um, I didn't have as much of 
kind of that identity impact that many of my friends had when they had a bad day, if you if you will. Um, and so I was able to sit, kind of take that those those bad performances um, and say, OK, you know, what can I learn from it and move forward um, and also you know, really give it to God, too. Um, to, to help me move forward. Whereas a lot of my friends that really impacted them, um, impacted their self-esteem, impacted their, their view of themselves, um, their view of their worthiness in a lot of ways. And that was kind of their state of mind until they had another good performance or, or won the next medal. Whereas as for me, my identity didn't really ride in that. Sure. It was nice, of course, right. To, to win or to to do well, sure. Um, but it certainly wasn't my defining characteristics for myself. But so the implication here is that you had this devotion through your Catholic faith, whereas the others that you're describing did not. Definitely, yeah, and a larger a larger picture of of who I am, um, rather than allowing that to be dictated just simply through my last scores or what I did. Sure. Well, when you were young, your parents started up something that still exists today. Mm -hmm. And again, speaks to always starting from a Catholic foundation. Tell the listeners what I'm referring to. Definitely. Um, So in, in 1999, my parents started Pastoral Solutions Institute, currently better known under catholiccounselors.com. Um, and it is a faith-based telehealth mental health services. Um, so essentially, we see Catholics all over the world who are just looking for guidance on different faith topics, um, spiritual life topics, family life topics, marriage, personal life, you name it. Um, and we see all of our clients over the phone. So the, that's kind of the telehealth aspect of that. Um, and we work from that, that Catholic perspective. So we just work hard to, to really incorporate the church's teachings, um, in all of our work to, to help integrate and and help our clients encounter God in their experiences and certainly include that in the healing process. And and I say we, because I am, um, currently a, a full-time mental health counselor with, um, Catholic counselors, and I am certainly part of, of that team as well now. Well, I think what the listeners are starting to see here is that, as you described before, you were a young girl, you were into figure skating, and here your parents were supporting you, but also making sure that you were a figure skater second, meaning that you were a practicing Catholic first. And so they backed up the way they raised you by going into business with something that they launched that is Catholic based. Sure. So I'm trying to show the listeners that there's a, a pattern here. In fact, Rachel, college wise, you followed the Catholic way again. I did. Um, so for college, I went to Franciscan University. Um, I majored in psychology with a double minor in marketing and exercise science. So kind of definitely had that vision of working with athletes, um, but working with in the mental health field. Um, I was always kind of looking for how do I incorporate my passion for sports, for, for athletics, um, but also my pa- my passion and uh, my family's passion for um, mental health. And I really found the, the way to, to kind of incorporate that. Um, and so I took that path when I attended Franciscan. So it was a very conscious choice. You were looking for a Catholic university. Definitely. I was looking for a place that would continue to kind of foster um, my faith development, my faith life. I, again, when many of my friends growing up and then also in college who who didn't attend Catholic universities, I mean, those are, I think we'd all agree that those are very formative times, right? Um, And so to be surrounded by people who, you know, we could at least share that same language in a sense um, was, was certainly very important to me. So in introducing you, and I've mentioned this a second time now, I said that you skated from the time that you were eight years old through where we are now in the conversation, which is college. And we just established that you were at a Catholic university. But at the same time, figure skating is a very individual, almost private sport, meaning the grace and the beauty and the intimacy Mm -hmm. probably led you to really being one with yourself. Mm -hmm. Does that mean you are very close with God in those moments on the ice, or was it difficult to 
quote unquote, make room for him out there when you're so within your performance? Definitely. It was when I was kind of closest to him. Um, I would even say now when I'm dancing, it's a way for me to kind of talk to God without using words um, and, and just kind of praise him through my body. Right. Which, um, you know, kind of the, the idea of the theology of the body where, where God created us and we can learn more about ourselves through how our bodies work and dance and figure skating certainly allow that opportunity for, you know, the complete awareness of your body, right? You have to be in complete awareness and complete control um, of your body dancing and figure skating, especially figure skating, (laughs) um, as there's a lot more danger there, but um, to be able to really integrate those and and kind of just praise God for the the gifts that he's given me in that. Uh, So, so even to this day, that's definitely the case where God is, very close to me when I'm when I'm dancing or figure skating. Well, and let's move to present day now and the work that you're doing professionally. When and why did you found the St. Sebastian Center for Performance Excellence? So I, I started with Catholic Counselors about three years ago, and I, I recently founded St. Sebastian um, as an attempt to to broaden the spectrum of, of those that, that we can minister to um, in the direction that, that I really feel called. Um, so I started the, the St. Sebastian Center for Performance Excellence to, to minister to those who perform, I mean, essentially we all perform in some area of our life, right? When, whether it's a, a job interview, whether we're an athlete, whether we're giving a, a presentation in school, whether we're a surgeon or a lawyer, right? We have to perform under pressure. Um, and, and there are ways... That, that we can do that gracefully and um, building on the, the confidence and, again, those strengths that, that God's given us. Um, and I that's certainly been a passion, as we've kind of been discussing throughout my entire life. Um, it's something that I want to be able to, to share and really feel called to share with with others. Um, and so that was kind of my, my impetus for, okay. for starting the center. Okay. And listeners, I'm going to have Rachel tell us how personal-slash-performance success for an athlete can be integrated into their faith. But first, I do want to mention that whether you work with a Catholic school like last week's guest, Erica Maurer, or if you work or volunteer for a diocese or are involved with your parish or some other ministry or organization that does events, such as a sports night, a parish mission, a men's conference, a diocesan event, or maybe even something a little less predictable, a little less traditional, maybe it's out in the secular world, something else where my Catholic sports radio ministry is a fit, I would be most grateful for the opportunity to come in as a guest speaker for whatever the occasion is that you or others are planning. Do familiarize yourself with my faith walk and my sports background, both on episode one of this show that you can go back and listen to, as well as on the website where it says, meet the host in the about section. And then look for the five-question Request Bruce as a guest speaker form on catholicsportsradio.net to start that conversation. And then also on catholicsportsradio.net, if you do like what I'm doing here, if you're tuning in regularly to Catholic Sports Radio, if it's helping your faith life, if you believe in this ministry, if you enjoy Catholic Sports Radio, you're getting some type of value, some benefit from it, and want to help out, I would appreciate your support. I am just a one-man show taking this all on by myself including doing all the producing, hosting, and editing of this show every week, as well as the administrative and promotional work, booking the guests, and so on, which means that all the expenses come out of my pocket. So if you feel I'm giving you something each week that you'd like to support, utilize the Donate to CSR button on catholicsportsradio.net, which will give you the opportunity to contribute in whatever amount you wish, securely, online. And for those of you that don't like the idea of putting credit card information online, just send me an email, bruce at catholicsportsradio.net, and I will get you an address to send a check or money order to via U.S. mail. Otherwise, look for the Donate to CSR button on catholicsportsradio.net. Pray about it. See if this ministry might be somewhere that you feel inspired to include in your tithing. I would truly appreciate your support. Rachel, what about that then, the personal-slash-performance success for an athlete? How can that be integrated into their faith to support both faith and academic development. Yeah, so that I would say that there's there's several ways, but one of the most prominent ways is something that we began touching on earlier, um, is just that idea of 
facilitating a broader identity than than our sport alone. And I think that's something that even the, the secular world is really seeing now, too, um, with the Le- LeBron James more than an athlete mm. um, right now. Right. Um, so just kind of that idea that that I am more than my game. I am more than my last scores. Um, and being able to kind of integrate who we are in God in that, again, those strengths that he's given us. I think one of my favorite ways of, of really doing that is through the idea of a personal mission statement. Mm. Um, so kind of taking a, a, a step back and saying, okay, you know, what are these strengths that I have? What are these qualities that, that God's given me, whether it's patience, um, I'm creative, I'm um, ambitious, I'm, you know, whatever they are for you. Um, and then kind of putting them in the form of a mission statement that says, you know, I am a fill in the blank kind of person with these strengths, right? Who who strives to be fill in the blank with those strengths that, you know, certainly are, are part of us, but maybe we have to think a little bit more about before we can do them, right? Um, and, and just kind of a very simple sort of personal mission statement that we can remind ourselves of, that we can carry with us, that we can hold our choices, our decisions, our internal dialogue, because we all have one all the time, right, um, <laughs> up to to be able to say, you know, what, no, that person said this thing to me. Or, you know, even as you mentioned um, in the reflection of those fans that wish bad things, right, because of uh, on us for whatever reason, like those things don't change who I am and who I was created to be in God, right? Like God created us each to be those unique and unrepeatable people. Um, and so that personal mission statement kind of helps us live out you know, who God created me to be, um, as opposed to almost giving the power to someone else to decide that about me. Mm, Um, And and certainly, uh, you know, a score in a game or those marks on a, you know, on a sheet that says, this is how well you did, can feel as though somebody else is deciding who I am and what I have to offer. Um, But no one else can decide that besides me and God. Right. And so I think that, that one of those ways is that personal mission statement is that reminder of who I am and who I strive to be no matter what. Yeah. And what you're describing makes me think of, I just saw a, I'm tempted to say a Nike commercial, but it ends up being a four minute video where it's showing Dwayne Wade and five people whose lives he touched and they're mm. doing it in conjunction with the fact that he was trading a Miami Heat jersey with a player from the opposing team at the end of as many games Mm -hmm. as he could. And in that, it shows that he made such an impact in these five people's lives through really nothing having to do with basketball at all. And those are the qualities that the Lord wants us to have. Those are the things that we're called to do. That's the way that we're supposed to serve in the kingdom. Are we called to be great basketball players? I don't necessarily think so. But to your point, he's using that platform Mm -hmm. to show people that, this is what I did with the talents that I was blessed with is now I've given these gifts, literally given these gifts to all these people and let them benefit from what you people deem my success because all people want to do is celebrate his statistics and the number of years he played and the number of championships he won. But I think that goes hand in hand with what you're talking about. I do want you to clarify, though, does someone have to be Catholic or I guess I should even say simply Christian for that matter to utilize the services of the St. Sebastian Center for Performance Excellence, or maybe even more so, just talk, Rachel, about the challenge of people who might say, oh, wait a minute, is there some sort of religious affiliation, St. Sebastian Center? I'm, I'm not looking for anything that way. I just want help with managing anxiety and increase my performance ability. Sure. They definitely do not have to be um, Catholic or Christian. Um, we serve individuals of, of every faith or even those who don't practice a faith. Um, I named it that. So St. Sebastian is actually a patron saint for athletes. Right. Um, and so I wanted to include my my kind of my background and identity in that. OK. Um, but that's certainly not a requirement. Um, and, and I would be, you know, we all we, essentially we have to meet everyone where they're at. Right. Um, and so I would never kind of expect anyone to to have a certain background um, to be able to be excellent, right, is really kind of <laughs> that, that, that ultimate goal there. Back in the intro, I mentioned a few examples 
of those that you have developed programming for. One of them was Franciscan University Athletics, and the other two did not have religious affiliation. So does that mean that whatever you developed for Franciscan University Athletics was spiritually based and the others were not? Um, so they're all based really in research. Um, so we, we really use those research-based and proven strategies um, to to achieve the goals and, and uh, of essentially performance success. Um, certainly with Franciscan University um, and and my work with, with Trinity um, Sports Medicine, there's certainly more of a, a faith aspect to that. Um, but again, it just is about kind of that those bones of the research-based strategies. Um, and then what is added in there is is really just language. I think you can share the same message of whether we say God-given, you know, gifts, or whether we say inherent strengths, or, you know, mm. it essentially means the same thing, mm-hmm. right? It's just the language that we speak. Um, and so so the bones are still the same um, to be able to, to really achieve, help those individuals achieve their goals. Um, but I would just say that the only difference is the language that is used. And that speaks to what you had just answered for me previously in talking about someone who might be reluctant to try to pursue the St. Sebastian Center because they're going to say, well, wait a minute, is there some sort of religious affiliation? And there you go. There's there's the way that you handle those people who don't say that, but you also can tell that these people are atheists or agnostic, and I'm not going to lead with my Catholic faith the first time I'm sure, meeting them. Sure, absolutely, absolutely. Well, in Matthew's Gospel, we hear about, I was hungry and you gave me food, I was thirsty and you gave me drink. And as it continues, we hear, ill, and you cared for me. Do you feel, Rachel, that this is your work being in obedience to the Lord? Because you're the referral source for Trinity Sports Medicine for athletes seeking mental health services such as PTSD, among others. Mm-hmm. I think in, in there's many ways that we can really strive to, to live out those corporal works of mercy and, and to strive to live out um, exactly what, what you just read. Um, and yes, I think that that is, is very much how I'm called to do that. And of course, I'm always looking for God to tell me the next way to, <laughs> that, that he's calling me. Um, but I think it even speaks to, to kind of how you were sharing, are we called to be a great basketball player? Maybe in an extent that that's where we're called to share our strengths and exactly what you were saying, you know, share minister to others through that, right? Like that is our platform. Um, and so I think in the, in very much that same way, like this is my platform and, and the way that I'm called to do that. Maybe earlier in my life, I was more called towards to doing that, um, in, in terms of figure skating and dancing on a, on a more regular basis. And now I'm called to this platform to be able to minister to others, um, in that way. Well, and it's not unlike listeners, if you never did hear episode one, I referred to it before, there's a part on there where I say, I'm talking about referring potential guests to me, and I say, please don't contact me and tell me to have Tim Tebow on because he's not Catholic, and you have to be (laughs) Catholic to be on the show. But he is a good example of someone who was a Florida Gators quarterback, yet at the same time, he used his platform. And now that his football playing days are over, granted, he's still given a kick at the can to playing baseball in the New York Mets system. But clearly, he has become known for all the great missionary work he does, all the great evangelization that he does. So we do see how maybe you weren't called to be a football player, per se, even though he did make it into the NFL briefly. But he was able to do God's real call for him thanks to the platform he was elevated on through football. Uh, Rachel, we're wrapping up here. I do want to give you an opportunity. This is something that I feel like is starting to become, I don't want to overstate it, but starting to become perhaps a, a boilerplate for ending the show each week, but just tell us about the parish that you belong to, the the name of the church, what city and state it's in, maybe anything about your parish community and or any involvement of yours there. I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, um, and I attend St. Benedict the Moor, which just recently, as of this past Sunday, has been renamed as the Divine Mercy Parish. Um, and it's a, a beautiful community, a very lively group of individuals who, who praise God, much more of a gospel background but it's absolutely an, it's an incredible parish um, and I love worshiping with them every Sunday um, and I, I 
as the the parish has been going undergoing some changes with the new name, um, they're looking for new ways to reach out um, and and always reach out to the community. Um, and so I'm looking to to get more involved with them in ways of how I can really serve their mission, um, whether that's you know, serving um, in different fundraisers or even if I can provide different um, resources for them with with the work that I do. Um, sure. That's something that that's kind of in discussion, um, and I'm, I'm excited about possibilities for that. Yeah, very nice, very nice. Well, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for making time to be on the show and congratulations uh, all the best to you god bless you with the work that you're doing with the saint sebastian center for performance excellence thank you so much thanks for having me on it's been wonderful talking to you my pleasure listeners we will close with the one that we do now and then called the sportsman's prayer let's do that together in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen heavenly father you have blessed us with our minds our spirits and our bodies Help us always to be good sports. Help us to understand that when we put on the team uniform, we are first and foremost ambassadors of the Catholic faith. May we always remember that those with whom we play and compete are our brothers and sisters in Christ. May we always treat each other with dignity and respect. May our work and play always give you honor and glory. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thanks so much for listening. This is Catholic Sports Radio. Find more at catholicsportsradio.net, as well as on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It is at Cath Sports Radio on all those, C-A-T-H, at Cath Sports Radio. I'm Bruce Wozniak, and remember, it's not whether you win or lose, it's that it's Jesus that you always choose. Mm-hmm.